What's up, you guys? So I'm coming on today um, just to answer some of the questions that I have received. So as you know, since I started this channel, I've been receiving like several emails um, with people asking me questions about my journey. And um, some of the questions I've noticed, they do tend to repeat themselves. A lot of people seem to be asking um, lots of like very similar questions, even though I've actually gone ahead to respond to the people that emailed me about these like on different social media platforms. Some send direct emails on Facebook and some even Instagram Messenger and stuff like that. But because they seem to be more repetitive, like when it comes to these questions, I do feel there are a lot of people that will probably benefit on from these questions. So I actually just sort of handpicked a few of those. And um, if you see me looking away from the camera, um, frequently it's probably because I'm just trying to read these questions so we can answer them. So I'm gonna do more of a Q&A session today. So I'll um, read the question out to you that I received and then I'll give a response to that. I don't want to, again, I don't want to make this video too long. So hopefully we'll probably do more, um, more like an episode kind of thing do this one and then hopefully the next one will continue um, with the rest of the questions. But today, let's see how many we can get through without making this video uh, too long. So without further ado, my question is, uh, so this is mainly for those that are say MPs or PAs trying to um, go into medical school, like wanting to be a physician. And the question I got was, is there a bridge program when it comes to like becoming um, a physician? So if you're already an MP or a PA and the answer is, yes and no so if you're wanting to go to like go from a nurse practitioner to being a physician there is no bridge program that's well established there is not you just have to go through the usual route just like everyone else you know do your prereqs and depends on where you go some schools we accept like some schools require mcat of course you know if you go to any of the u.s medical schools they do they all require mcat and then the caribbean medical schools not all of them require mcat some do but some don't as far as from the PA aspect, though, there is a bridge program, but that's actually for the DO, so the Osteopathic Medical School. They have, I know there's one in Lake Home, so Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. It's more like a three-year program, so they require, so if you're a PA, you take an MCAT, and then you apply just like every other medical student. For, so for that DO program, going from a PA, there is a bridge program. And um, my next question is... So do you feel like being a nurse practitioner, um, medical school was actually, was it easier for you going in as a nurse practitioner? And I'll probably, my response to that will probably be not exactly. Uh, probably the first two years, not so much. Being an MP didn't do much for me at that point, I'll say. Just because the first two years of your medical school, that's where you're dealing with, you know, the basic sciences, you know, the physiologies the pathophysiologies, the biochemistries, and all the basic stuff, basically. And I have to say, yeah, being familiar with a lot of things like coming in as a nurse practitioner, that helps. But at the same time, it doesn't really take you that far within those two years. But beyond those two years, though, when you get to um, two years after that, when you actually start the clinical rotation part of it, it really does help just because you're more like basically in a clinical setting. You know, you're seeing these patients. It's more like bedside um, care at that point and being able, so your bedside manners, your ability to interact with the patient, like history taking, stuff like that, working with colleagues, um, you know, even the your preceptors and stuff. It's something at that point, it's become more like a natural thing for you. So you can easily like, you know, navigate the system at that point, it gets much easier. So I know personally for me, the second two, the rest of the two years, like after those basic science here, the clinical rotation period was much easier. So being an MP at that point did make that um, easier for me. So the next question is, were you able to continue working while you were in medical school? Enter, yes and no. So um, yes and no, basically, because my first two years, I was able to continue working part-time PR and like, you know, emergency medicine, um, urgent care. And because I was mainly doing I actually did more urgent care within those two years, actually. I was just more on a PRN schedule, so basically as needed schedule whenever I was off from school or had a little break or something, I would work, and when it was time to take exams and stuff like that, I definitely would not work at all, just because it was really hard trying to combine like the med school exams and stuff with work. 
So, but after the first two years of medical school, I actually quit working completely because it was really, it was starting to, you know, get to that point where you have to study for these board exams, like they, sorry, um, the licensing exams, the USMLEs, and that really starts to get tough, like real fast if you keep working. Because for me, I always say to myself, like for me, medical school had to be the priority at that point and not so much of the job itself. So I focus more on medical school two years, like two, actually after the first two years, so around the time of USMLE. So I worked the first two years, but the second two years, I basically quit working. So that's the answer to your question. The very next one is, how did you pay for medical school? Well, how do we pay for anything these days, right? Well, actually for medical school, if you, of course we know, if you go to any of the US medical schools, you will get, um, Title IV financial aid. Some of the Caribbean medical schools actually have um, the Title IV financial aid, but not a, all of them do. Mine didn't. So I had to basically pay out of pocket for everything. So I, how did I pay for it? Basically just used all of the savings that I had, you know, everything that I had saved up from working as a nurse and a nurse practitioner. And then whatever was left over, I just, um, I got private loans to offset that. So that's how I paid for it. So we got all these loans that we still have to pay back by the time we're done with all this, but who's counting anymore, right? Okay, next question. Um, this one, I guess this one's specific to my school. Uh, someone had asked, um, actually not someone, actually I think I had three people email about the same question. So they were asking where I did my clinical rotations. So I'm sure you guys know most IMGs, you spend your two years on the island and stuff. After those two years, you come back to the States to do your clinical rotations. Some schools have a designated States like where they have affiliation with certain hospitals to do their rotation. My school had affiliation with hospitals in three, uh, actually, yeah, three different States and ours were West Virginia, Chicago, and Arizona. So we had the option to pick any uh, state of our choice, but it just so happened that I wasn't actually residing, you know, initially in any of these states. So I basically just had to pick one. I picked West Virginia just because it was easier for me with scheduling for my school. Like you had the opportunity to just keep going, like no wait period stuff. Because I know most times in certain schools, there is like this wait period to schedule for the next rotation once you were done with one. So for us, um, for my school, actually clinical rotation, I picked West Virginia. So that's why I did my, my next question. How long did it take you to finish medical school? Well, it took me, I'd probably say three and a half years. That's total of everything, three and a half years. And everyone knows in America, medical school is four years. Same thing with the Caribbean medical school. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, the DO, the bridge programs for PA to um, the DO program, they have actually a three year program. It would be nice if they had just three years, right? Nice. And my other question, so the next question, I'll probably make a special video for it. And that question is actually asking me the reason I chose family medicine. I can go on and on and on about that, but at the risk of making this video too long, I'm not going to tackle that question right now. I'll actually make a special a video for that to enter and tell you the pros and cons just because I have two uh, favorites when it comes to specialties and one is emergency medicine that part is well established and the other part is family medicine but the reason i chose family medicine i'll actually make a video for that so you look out for that um, to find out why and the last one the last question i'm actually going to answer here is well i guess this goes to um the folks that have kids so this one says how did you study with young children so having young children how were you able to study Oh, well, you do what you have to do, right? Just leave the house, go to the library. If you're not able to do that, lock yourself in a special room, do whatever you have to do. And when it comes time for the board exams and stuff like that, if you have the opportunity to actually leave home and go stay somewhere else, maybe at a relative's place, and it doesn't matter, just be away from home. Just, you know, a block more of a blocked out, protected time just for that exam. For me, oh, that did great. It was remarkable, the results of it. I'll tell you that, so that's what works for me. And believe it or not, it doesn't stop the kids from coming and knock on the door every time to ask, oh, mommy, are you done studying? Is it time to play? Stuff like that, that 
it's to be expected but guess what if you're not home they don't get to bother you right so that's how i got to stay all right guys so i think i'm gonna go ahead and stop this video right here like i said i'll have many more questions to come later i do have a, a long list of questions um, I just want to go ahead and address these right now. I'll be putting out more videos as well to talk to folks about how I study for the USMLE exams because we all know, my God, that exam is hard. I mean, not even that exam, those exams, right? Because there are multiple exams with these licensing exams. And the other one, I uh, also got questions about it's um, the MBME comp exams. For those that are from a Caribbean medical school, we all know by the time you graduate, or actually not when you graduate, after your first two years, you do have to write the MBME comp exam and that. It's not an easy exam, I know that from experience. So I'll also put out a video about how I study for it, my strategies and some interesting uh, resources to actually help you um, pass those exams. But anyway, I will go ahead and stop this video right now. I hope you guys are good, everybody stay safe stay vaccinated we see what's going on in the world so keep that in mind and if you like these videos please like and subscribe okay comment and send me emails with your questions and stuff and i'll be glad to enter and help anywhere i can okay until then you'll take care